Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is uh, the first part of our next module um, and we are understanding quadratic functions. And don't forget all your lessons can be found at, at that groovy website there. Here we go. So there's our, our question. What is the effect of the constant of the graph? This constant right here, A, so this could be a 2 or a negative 1 third or 5 fourths we're going to have in this lesson. Uh, with uh, y equals ax squared or f of x equals ax squared or g of x we're going to use. So a function that's in the form of uh, ax squared plus bx plus c is called a quadratic function. And the terms a, b, and c are constants. That just means that they're numbers right there. And this is never zero because if it was zero, then it would be a linear function. It would just be bx plus c. If that was zero, that wouldn't be there, okay? So quadratics always have a degree of 2. So there's our degree right there. That exponent right there always has a degree of 2. And then, so the most basic quadratic function is uh, f of x or y. y equals x squared. And then we're going to call this the parent graph of all the other quadratic functions. So we're going to focus on this parent graph first, you guys. And, and then uh, let's go ahead and complete this table right here. So remember, f of x equals y, so y equals x squared. So, so when we plugged in negative 3 squared, negative 3 times negative 3 is, is 9. Okay, so, so look at this pattern. This goes negative 3, blank, negative 1. So this is going to be negative 2, and negative 2 squared is that 4 right there, okay? Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. Here I am right here. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared, because look, you guys, it's f of x, so we plug in f of 2, so when x equals 2, we plug in 2, so that's going to be 2 squared, so we're going to get 4 right there. And then finally, when we plug in x equals 3, then f of 3 would be 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, and these are symmetrical, you guys. Parabolas are symmetrical. Look, this is 9, this is 9, this is 4, this is 4, this is 1, this is 1, and 0. Okay, 0 is our turning point. So let's plot these points connecting, uh, and then we'll connect the points to sketch our curve. Okay, so first we're going to graph negative 3, 9. So we'll go to the left, 3, up 9 and plot a point right there, okay? All right, and then we'll graph negative 2, 4. So to the left, 2, up 4, okay? And then the next one is negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then uh, 2, 2, and then finally 3, 9. So over 2, up 4, over 3, up 9. If we went over 4, four, it'd go up four squared or 16, which would be way up here. Now it says to connect these points. So this is going to be our parabola. It's going to make a parabola. All quadratic equations makes a nice parabola. And they're kind of a U-shaped curve right there. So there's f of x equals x squared. Okay. So this curve is called a parabola. And the point where the parabola turns direction, so see how it's going down, going down, going down, and then it turns directions right here. It turns directions at that vertex. Here the vertex is 0, 0. Okay? And so a vertical line that passes through the vertex, so here's a vertical line that passes through the, ver the vertex, and it divides the parabola in half. Can you see this left half folding over on this right half, or this right half folding over on this left half, if we folded it right down here, this is called the axis of symmetry. I like to say AOS for the axis of symmetry, okay? So what what's the domain of this, you guys? All right, a long time ago we were talking about domain. Domain is how much the graph goes to the left and how much it goes to the right, okay? So the, the domain is it goes to the left forever, because I can go to the left forever. It would still go way up here. You know, the farther I went to the left, the graph would shoot up. And I can go to the right forever. There's no restrictions on X. I can plug in X equals anything and square it. So the domain is all real numbers, okay? So left and right. And the range is up and down movement. So it goes up forever, but it doesn't go down forever. It stops right there. So this is at Y equals zero. Domain is an X answer. And your range is a y answer, so our domain is um, uh, the set of all real numbers, or x is all real numbers, and then your range is a y answer. Okay, it's equal to zero, but it's everything greater than zero, so y is greater than uh, or equal to zero is our range right there, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and graph the quadratic functions by plotting the points and sketching the curve and state the domain and range. Okay, so here's the first one right here. Okay, now they're giving us a graph because this one's going down. It's going down 
because of this negative. We'll talk about that in a minute, you guys, okay? So let's go ahead and plug in negative 3. Negative 3 goes here, so g of negative 3 is going to equal 2 times negative 3, and, and negative 3 squared is the same as positive 3 squared, so that's why I plugged in plus or minus 3, because when I square negative 3, that's 9, and when I square positive 3, that's 9, so I just put in plus or minus 3 to knock off both of these on the same problem right here, okay? So this, is, this squared is 9, so negative 2 times times 9 is negative 18, okay? And then uh, we're going to go ahead and plot those points in just a minute, okay? So now let's plug in uh, g of negative 2, and we'll plug in positive 2, because negative 2 squared and positive 2 squared is, is still 4. So here we have, and notice we didn't graph that, because this graph doesn't go down to the negative 18, so we can't really plot that on this graph. I mean, if we did, it'd be over 3, and it would be way down, about down here somewhere, okay? All right, so then um, uh, plus or minus 2 squared is 4, so we have negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. Now I can plot that one, you guys. So go over 2, down 8, and then go over 2 on this side, down 8. Okay, let's plug in negative 1. So g of plus or minus 1 is going to be, uh, this is 1 squared, okay, negative 1 squared and 1 squared is 1, so negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So we'll go, uh, so negative 1 comma negative 2 and then positive 1 comma negative 2. So here's negative 1, negative 2, uh, 1 and negative 2 right there, okay? And then let's plug in 0, okay, so 0 squared is 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0. So we plotted that point, and so here's our parabola. It's going like this, and don't make a V, don't make a Sharpie, kind of round it right there, and it's going to go down, okay? This guy is going down because, uh, because of the negative 2 right there, okay? What's the domain? We can go to the left forever and to the right forever, so the domain is all real numbers. What's the range? This one goes down forever, so it maxes out there at y equals 0. So y is less than or equal to 0 is uh, our range. Your range is a up and down movement. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, so let's plug in plus or minus 3. So when we plug in plus or minus 3, square that, we get 9. So nine, uh, 1 half of 9 is 4 and a half, but it's negative 1 half of 9, so it's negative 4 and a half. So we go to the left 3, down 4 and a half. Go to the right 3, down 4 and a half. And that's these two guys right here. Okay, now let's plug in 2, plus or minus 2. 2 squared is 4, and then negative 1 half of 4 is negative 2. So we go to the left 2, down 2, to the right 2, down 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2, and then positive 2, negative 2. Okay, negative uh, 1, and then positive 1. When we square that, that's 1, and then negative 1 half of 1 is, is negative 1 half. Okay, and then plug in 0, and we get 0, and then connect those. This one's a little bit wider. It's wider because of this negative 1 half, and it's going down because of the negative 1 half. The domain is all real numbers. The range is y is less than or equal to 0. Okay, let's try one more, and then we'll talk about these graphs. Okay, 5 fourths. Okay, so let's plug in uh, plus or minus 3. So plus or minus 3 squared is still 9, and then 5 fourths times 9 over 1, 5 times 9 is 45, and then 4 times there's an imaginary 1, there's 4. Okay, 45 divided by 4 is 11 and 1 fourth. Okay, that's kind of off my graph, but it's doable on this graph, because here's 9, here's 10, so here would be 11, and a little bit past 11, 11 and a fourth right there, okay? And it's positive because uh, the 5 fourths is positive. All right, let's plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared squared is 4. 5 fourths times 4 is either 20 fourths or just 5. Okay, you can go ahead and cancel these 4s right here, then you get 5. Okay, so when we go to the uh, to the left 2, it goes up 5. To the right 2, it goes up 5. Okay, let's do uh, plus or minus 1. Okay, 1 squared is 1. 5 fourths times 1 is 5 fourths which is 1 and 1 fourth. So over 1, up 1 and 1 fourth. Over 1, up 1 and 1 fourth. Finally, 0, 0 squared times 5 fourths is 0. So we'll plug that in, and there's our parabola. It's going down like this, okay? Make it a kind of a U shape right there, okay? 
there's that. And then the domain, you guys, your domain is all real numbers and your range is y is greater than or equal to zero. I didn't connect those just because I was running out of time. And I'm doing this on my laptop with my finger, so it's kind of hard to, my finger starts wobbling right there. Just, I just didn't want to go all the way up there. Anyways, okay, so state the vertex and the axis of symmetry on, on each of those graphs. So here is the graphs that we just did right here. The vertex is the turning point. So the vertex is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And the axis of symmetry on all of these is the y-axis. And that has an equation of x equals 0. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 0, or you can say the y-axis. Now, it won't be the y-axis when we move them away. So that's why I'm putting an equation right here. It's x equals your x-coordinate of your vertex. So anyways. Okay, so when the graph of g of x is uh, a equals uh, x squared compared to the parent graph, f of x equals x squared, it opens uh, up when a is positive. So here we had 5 fourths, that was positive. Our graph opened up, and it opens down when a is negative right there, okay? And then so uh, these guys have a minimum when it opens up. So when a is positive and it's opening up, then it has a minimum value, okay? Go up forever so it doesn't have a maximum maximums infinity right here and then when it's opening down it goes down forever so that's a maximum value right there so the max is and they're their y answers you guys so y equals your y coordinate of your vertex which is zero right there almost done okay and then when the absolute value of a is greater than one the graph is more narrow I have a hard time saying narrower. So it's more narrow than the, gra uh, than the parent graph. So, so here's the parent graph, f of x equals x squared right here. So the parent graph of f of x equals x squared is this one right here. So over 1, up 1 squared, over 2, up 2 squared, which is 4. So if we go over 1, it'll go up 1 squared, over 2, up 2 squared. That's this one right here. And then when A, the number in front, is um, uh, bigger than 1, it makes it skinnier or more narrow. So they call it a vertical stretch right here, okay? And this is over here. This is when A is less than uh, negative 1. So it's just skinnier, but it's opening down. So there's the g of x right here. This guy is just the reflection of f of x. That's all that kind of lighted one right there. It's just this reflection of f of x. In fact, this is... Uh, uh, g of x equals negative x squared. So when it opens down, it's negative x squared right there. Okay. So and then um, uh, it's called. It said it has a vertical compression when it's a fraction between zero and one. Okay. So here it's uh, it's positive. A is like a half or maybe a third or a fourth or a fraction that's between zero and one. So what it does is it has a vertical compression. So here's the parent graph. F of x equals x squared right here. And then when you have a number in front that's let that's a fraction between zero and one or here it's between zero and negative one okay so like negative one half right there it has a vertical compression right there so that's why we say the absolute value on that all right you guys if you are in our class that would be your assignment okay and then you should pause it because here's the answers to this you guys to the odds all right you guys hope that makes sense and take care